Brave Run. I'm doing a quick on the fly vlog because we're in the GI Yaris. It's going to be something different. My brother's thinking of getting one. It's going to be different. I'll close the window because it's actually not as warm as you think. Let me give me the key. It's like a two in one vlog, really, because it's kind of not just by the GI Yaris. Oh, snap. But just about the GIA, I suppose, how good the uh, Driving. Samsung is, as well as you actually. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Initial impressions so far the gearbox is quite responsive, um, so is the throttle. I'd say it's actually depending. Oh, snap! Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, it's definitely not a slow car, that's for sure. Um, that was actually not bad. I do feel like your gear shifts need to be matched I, with the I car. Don't, I don't drive manuals or I feel like you need to drive the car quite rough and rugged and aggressive to get the best out of it. Um, heel and toes probably going to be really, really rewarding in this car. My brother, for some reason, he wore Yeezys. Not a good idea for proper driving I do like the little gauges and stuff inside Tunnel. In fact, stop in it and do a launch. <laughs> so, initial responses from me so far. Can you see me as well? Yeah, yeah? okay. Um, steering wheel, very thin. I actually think it's too thin, even though I got small hands. Um, yeah, it's it's really minute. Um, I think my gear shifts are a bit more aligned with what this car likes. Um, it's the harder you drive it, the more aggressive it wants a gear shift. You actually kind of need to keep on the throttle um, because you, in essence, you're kind of rev matching it. So that if you let the revs go down a bit too much, it thuds a lot. So you really need to um, keep on it with the throttle. It sounds amazing. I think for a modern car, this is kind of what you're looking for. So you see where we are now, bro? Yeah. But it sounds absolutely amazing. This car, you know what I actually think? You're probably, I don't know if you're gonna agree with me or not on this player. The dials, they're very basic, but it reminds you of Gran Turismo. Mm, no, uh, how, do you, how does it not? Yes, it does, it's not Gran Turismo. No, 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 I'm not on about like... I know what you mean, you were in like that the, You know the, the dials in the Average game? Average speed zone. The rear view mirror though is a bit funky. Like you've literally got no visibility through the rear. Um, I roll on from third gear. Boost kicks in about three and a half thousand up here. This handling is amazing. Ooh. Okay, so a lot of people have talked about this on YouTube, which is the gearbox is so close together that you can actually miss shift really easy. And that was nearly one of those circumstances. That was uh, very interesting. It was, luckily for me, it felt like I was about to go into fifth and not third. 
but as soon as I felt it kind of feel weird, I just didn't change. But I've seen, I think it was Misha on YouTube talk about that as well, with what happened with their car in Germany, and you saw that. After a quick little change of events, brother was like, listen, if I'm gonna buy this car, then I need to drive it a little bit in normal mode, so swap seats with him again. Um, it's nice. I personally didn't feel that different between normal mode and track mode on the streets. This drives. It does drive good. You can feel the mechanical grip really nicely throughout the car. So, my initial impression so far on the car is it drives amazing. Um, it's got an immense amount of grip. I think the four wheel drive, the short um, wheelbase, um, the light body, and I think the power on it pretty much matches what the car needs. What I will say is, I'm not sold on if it's worth the money. Not so much as, okay, if you're someone who only buys brand new cars, then this is gonna be a great little fun car. But is it worth the money? It does sound good though. But is it worth the money compared to other used cars? That's a tough one to answer. I think I have to think about that a bit more. I'm gonna hopefully get a little bit of time filming around the car. So, looking around the car really quickly, this is actually very spacious. It's got a, oh, it looks kind of like a little Japanese sounding thing. Um, there's a lot of cubby hole spaces. There's like, literally, that's a cubby hole as well as a door handle. Um, but yeah, it's all really big spaces going on over here. Yeah, that's not really that big, but you got a lot of storage. But this is what I mean about the dials. Now the dials to me, I think they look very like classic Ford, classic, you know, Toyota and stuff like that. It's it's not nothing like modern cars nowadays. It looks from this point of view, it just looks really plasticky. Kind of the theme that they've gone for with the car. Now I have test driven the um the new Supra before and that's got a very modern approach to it, whereas this is quite um more of a analog feel. Now in terms of the car, oh, it does look so good. It looks proper. It's gonna have another look. You know what, show me the, the boot. Uh, have you, is the boot button there in the back? Does it automatically? Oh, this part gets really dirty. The boot's not a bad size. Yeah, despite it's something that's so classic JDM, I'm sure that's a card holder for the uh, ETC and stuff like that in Japan. We've been to Japan, so we had to use the ETC and stuff. It's not a bad car. But, okay, you gotta look at it from a, a comparison point of view of what it's gonna cost monthly, even against a used car, and depreciation. Or, there's a lot you gotta think about when looking at buying a new car. Let's open the bonnet. It, it does look good. Toyota, you have built an amazing car. I just want to say that off the bat because coming back, thinking about the car, it's been about a week or so since I've driven the car. Um, I only got to drive it for about five minutes. The other 15 minutes, my brother got to drive it. But I have to say, Toyota, Thank you so much for building this car because you you seriously made something awesome. Really, really awesome. And because of that, I want to say as well, every other car manufacturer, take note. Take note of the Yaris GR, the Civic Type R, and the M2, um, would you want to say the M2 or M2 competitions? And the M2 on its own is amazing as it is. Those are three cars that a lot of people rave about online because of how they make you feel as a driver. Uh, unfortunately, with electronic cars nowadays, probably not gonna have that for a very long time, but it's really good that we've got it. And in all fairness, it probably shows 
Now these cars are probably the end of their generations in that respect. Probably why they're not a bad investment. But let's go into what I think of the Yaris GR after a week or so of basically wondering, would I spend my money on a Yaris GR? What I probably said in that video, first impressions with the car, it's probably gonna start with a lot of people and be like, no, you're completely wrong. You're, this is the next amazing car. This is, an, you know, all these fantastic things. The dials on the car, I'll be honest, bit of a letdown. Not really what I would be expecting for that kind of money. Yes, it's very basic, but we also have a Toyota Igo, which my mom drives around and that has a more interesting dash than the Yaris GR and I'm quite surprised that they've gone for something so analog and basic looking considering that it probably wouldn't have cost that much to put a little bit of extra character into it it looks very very plasticky the steering wheel you know what I thought about it and I was like I jumped into our Igo and even that has a bit more thickness to it maybe not the entire wheel as such but the the bit where you rest your thumbs onto that part is thicker on the Igo than it is on the Yaris GR the, it, the whole steering wheel feels really slim and thin and it's actually more reminiscent to classic JDM cars um, and in fact just cars in general really when it used to be thinner but I think for the kind of car it is I was expecting it to have a little bit more meat behind it the other point that I wanted to discuss was not just the, the handling characteristics of the car, the engine, the suspension, it is so well dialed in. Um, for, for, for the kind of car it is, for the way you want to drive it, for the, the B-road cruncher that it is, that you're just going to munch all those miles up and put a massive smile on your face. I think the ride height is practically about right, maybe 20, 30, 40 mil lower would be a nice little fitment look but in terms of road clearance and all those kind of things the actual rally car feel that you're going for it's amazing for that the bits that i don't feel like it's worth the money is because as a brand new car like i said in the video earlier on yeah it's an amazing car and if you're someone who likes to buy brand new cars you're going to be happy but as someone who's comfortable with buying a used car it's hard to justify when Considering uh, an old Subaru Impreza or an Evo has a lot of the same capabilities and characteristics that this car is trying to replicate. Because you gotta remember, this car is really reliving a lot of classic rally car um, heritage. I find the Subaru and the Evos to be better value for money. Because one, they're gonna go up in value regardless. It's just JDM tax now. Two, they're actually bigger cars inside. The, the GR was actually really small, so from a practicality point of view, an Evo or a, um, an Impreza, WRX, STR, those kind of things, they're, they're gonna be kind of easier to live with. The boots are gonna be bigger, they got rear seats and rear doors. Yeah, you can talk about reliability. Now, if you go for a car that's well taken care of, around the 20 to 30,000 pounds worth, they're gonna be really good condition cars or they're gonna be heavily modified. Both of them, better value for money. Yeah, you can say, oh, but you're not gonna have warranty and all these other bits and pieces. What can I say, honestly? I only had 20 minutes with the car. Um, that was 10 minutes, well, actually five minutes of me driving and the other 15 minutes was my brother driving. He is someone in a very different position to me. He's still really considering the car. For him, the daily driver point of view, the, the raw feeling that you get from it, um, that hot hatch as well and four-wheel drive the turbo the noises it gives out it's all a lot of fun and the other cars that it was contending with for him was an rs6 even an e63 very different cars and in fact when you compare it against them yeah the yaris is completely out of his water in terms of performance but from a day-to-day -day living point of view with regards to not just the the finance deal or the arrangements to repay for the car but the reliability and also just the general maintenance the the fuel consumption the Yaris GR kind of becomes a smarter choice if it was me and I was looking to buy a car that I could daily enjoy as well as you know get around to the shops and all these kind of things E90 M3 four doors V8 manual or DCT whichever one you pick it's gonna be an amazing car to drive I will say one thing to, to 
your sales rep was saying that this is the best gearbox ever. You need to drive an S2000. <laughs> the S2000 gearbox is a million times better. Um, no disrespect to the Yaris GR, but yeah, the S2000 gearbox is one of the best I've ever driven with. It's got a different kind of magic, really. I don't know. I don't want this video to sound like as though I'm hating on the Yaris GR because genuinely speaking, I'm so happy that Toyota have made a car like this. And in fact, as a brand new car, there's not that much out there at that price range that can compete with it. Simple. It is that good of a car. Do I want to spend my own money on that car? No. Is it fair for me to judge the car like this? Yes. Why? Because the Yaris GR is basically made for people like me to love them and lust after them. That's how it always has worked. Yes, the people that buy the cars end up buying the cars because they like them as well. But the fan base on the car is around people like me. Majority of people that, I'll give you an example. Skyline, oh sorry, not Skyline, Nissan GTR. Most of the people that love that car, never gonna own one, but it's the fan base. So it's important for the fan base to love the car. And as someone like me who, who wouldn't mind owning one in the future as a used car, these are the things that I kind of feel is important to talk about. You know, the, the Yaris GR, it's, it's got a really weird uh, emotion with me at the moment. On one side, I absolutely love what Toyota have done. I love the fact that they've got this ethos behind them. They want to take it back to racing. They want to take it back to building amazing hot hatches. You know, with what they've done with the GT86, the Supra and the Yaris, that is awesome. Toyota, you know, I, I take my hat off to you guys. Seriously, amazing stuff that you guys have decided to do. It's actually quite funny to think about this one thing for the, the Yaris which kind of reflects a little bit on what kind of car it is. It has a manual handbrake, which is gonna be great for rallying or power sliding and those kind of things. But at the same time, it has auto blip for downshifts. So it shows that it's kind of catered towards two different types of drivers. The ones that will probably never use the handbrake and they will probably use the auto blip. And the ones that will probably use the handbrake will never use the auto blip because they like to drive their cars in a much more raw format. Yeah, I, I love the car. There's just, there's just so much with it that does confuse me as to what would I do if I was to try and buy that car myself? Would I spend the money on it? I think I need more time in a Yaris, to be honest. I think that's what it's coming down to for me is I didn't get enough time with it to truly fall in love with it. I've just got a first impressions and yeah, I've, I've thought about it in the sense of, I love the car. I think the car's extremely capable. It's a lot of fun. Would I be able to put my money towards buying it? Nope. Am I financially able to buy it now? Nope. There's other cars that I'm happier with for a similar price that I would rather buy. And I think that's, that's where I'm kind of concluding it right now. I love the car for the price for a brand new car, amazing. Would I buy it? Unfortunately not. Would I recommend, would I recommend someone else to buy it or at least try it? Yeah. If you want a brand new car, yeah, go for it. But you really have to weigh up what it's going up against. Because as my brother's point of view, against an RS6 and an E63, I don't know if it's able to compete against them. But then that's a completely different market. The Yaris GR wasn't made to compete against those cars. And I'll be honest with you, my brother's um, wife, my sister-in-law, she doesn't like the Civic Type R, so that's definitely out of the question. But yeah, let's see what my brother decides to do, because if he does decide to get one, well, I'm not gonna complain, because I get to drive that car every so often and it's gonna be an amazing trip. It's gonna always be a right laugh to drive around in. But yeah, everyone, I hope you did find this video interesting, entertaining, or even thought provoking in that respect. If you did, please leave a comment down below of what your thoughts are with my opinion on the Yaris GR, as well as what your opinion might be on the Yaris GR. And along with that, please give the video a thumbs up if you found it entertaining or helpful in any way, shape or form. And please consider subscribing to see more from me, not just in regards to the car builds, but everything I get up to with cars, might even be more car reviews coming out in the future because yeah there's some stuff that i need to make everyone aware of but for now 
I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out. Bye. I guess it's up to my brother now. Does he get one or does he not? Or does he go for one of the other cars? It's an interesting one. It's, an, it's a very fortunate predicament to be in.